So, in this video, I will cover the transformer and the improvement brought by the performer architecture. I will focus on the encoding side, as all improvements demonstrated by the performer encoder over the transformer encoder all apply to the decoding side as well. Okay, let's begin with this transformer encoder. So, the input will be a series of words which are often referred to as tokens. The first stage represent, represents each of these words as some basic word embeddings. These word embeddings are then passed to the multi-head attention mechanism. The add and norm layer takes the output from the multi-head attention and adds it onto the result from the input embedding layer. This is known as a residual connection. Then the combined result is passed to a typical feedforward network, which is followed by another residual connection. The final outputs are a series of vector representations for each of my input words. These vectors can be interpreted as meaningful word embeddings. Hence, we can say the whole purpose of the transformer encoder is to generate sophisticated word embedding representations of all the input words to the model. The most interesting aspect of the transformer encoder is the multi-head attention mechanism, and hence we will focus on this aspect. But first, let's see what are the main differences between the performer encoder architecture and the transformer. So, we pretty much have the same structure as before. In fact, the architecture of the performer is identical to the transformer, except we have replaced the multi-head attention mechanism with something, something called the favor plus mechanism. As a heads up, the favor plus mechanism is an approximation of the attention mechanism, which allows the performer encoder to be faster than the transformer in operation. As the only difference between the two models is in this red layer, the rest of this video will specifically focus on understanding how we can approximate the multi-head attention mechanism with the favor plus mechanism. For any attention mechanism, we have three inputs, the value, key, and query, which we have respectively denoted V, K, and Q. Note, the transformer tends to use the word embeddings in turn as the query and the keys and values and all the other embeddings where the key is its corresponding value are the same word embedding. Let us denote the output of the attention mechanism as Y. The multi-head attention mechanism is a simple extension of the attention mechanism where there are several attention mechanisms in parallel. The output from each attention mechanism is concatenated to produce the final output Y. Let us denote the dimension of a word embedding as D and the number of words as the input of the input as L. For example, in this input we can see that there are L words where L is set to the value of 7. Then we can think of our value, key and query as tensors where each word embedding is a row vector. Hence, each of these matrices will have L rows and D columns. Now, for a given attention mechanism, we have a compact formula to link the output to the three inputs. A more useful form of writing this formula is shown at the bottom of the screen. These formulae are equivalent, but you might need to stare at them for a bit to convince yourself. Okay, so far we had this formula for an attention mechanism. But what is the most costly operation in terms of time in this formula that will be required to be performed by a computer? Well, that would be the tensor A multiplied by the V matrix. We can clearly see that the number of operators, operations to multiply these two matrices will be L squared D. Recall L represents the number of words at the input. This order of complexity means we have a quadratic relationship between the number of input words and the time taken to execute the attention mechanism.
This is pretty bad because if we want to handle long sequences of words, our attention mechanism will take quadratically longer in time. This is why the performer is introduced. As we have mentioned, the performer uses the favor plus mechanism in place of the traditional attention mechanism. Just for completeness, favor stands for fast attention via positive orthogonal random features. As we know from the regular attention mechanism formula, the attention mechanism matrix is given by this formula. If we consider an element of A that is on the ith row and jth column, we know from our formula that it will be a function of the ith row of Q and the jth row of K. Hence, we can say that this element is some function of the ith query and the jth key. But I personally don't like to use the letter f for our function, because we know what the function is, specifically it's not something random. So we will represent it with a symbol of something called the kernel. In other words, I'm slightly changing the notation we are using. Now, in general, we can write the kernel of two vectors as the following. The e represents the expectation, and the phi function represents something called the random feature map. The basic idea is that the phi is a function that is sampled from a distribution of functions, where the distribution satisfies this equation we have here. So, when we apply this randomly sampled function on some vector, it can change the dimensionality of the vector. We will say it changes the dimensions from d to r. So now, using this relationship, we have a new expression for an element of our attention matrix. One way we can approximate the expectation is by just using one sample of the phi function and just say that is good enough. Hence, if we denote Q dash and K dash as the matrices after having the random feature map applied to each of their rows, we have an approximate formula for the attention matrix. A approximately equals Q dash transposed multiplied by K dash. This is essentially where the favor plus mechanism makes a saving over the traditional attention mechanism because we have eliminated the non-linearity in computing the attention matrix and can now be calculated directly by multiplying two matrices, which is a linear operation. From before, we know the output of the traditional attention mechanism is given by this formula. If we substitute in our approximate attention matrix formula, we can control the order in which we do the matrix multiplications to give us this new set of formulae to approximate the output to the attention matrix. I will call this approximate output to the attention mechanism y hat. As we did before with the traditional attention mechanism, let's find the most costly operation in this approximate attention mechanism. That would first be k dash multiplied by v. That of course has an order of complexity of l r d. But this resultant matrix is post multiplied by q dash, which also has an order of complexity of l r d. And voila! This is the favor plus mechanism that has approximated the traditional attention mechanism. And we can see that now we only have a linear order of complexity with L, i.e. the number of input words. Hence, we can expect the performer to perform a lot faster for long sequences compared to the transformer.